Now, in this week's Let's Talk Some Star Wars video, as promised, I'm going to start by more or less just reading some of your comments in response to last week's video, where I asked the question, what does the character of Luke Skywalker mean to you, and how do you think his character can be fixed going forward? And I of course put the word fixed in quotations because not everyone out there feels like he needs fixing in the first place, and that he was just fine the way he was in The Last Jedi. And then later in the video, I'm going to ask some questions about Rey for you all to answer, which will then be discussed further in next week's Let's Talk Some Star Wars video. And for those of you who may be sick and tired of me talking about Luke or The Last Jedi in general, I'm happy to say that I will be starting a new fanfiction series, hopefully not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday. And no, it will not be my episode 9, though I'm also still working on that but rather it will instead be called Fate of the Apprentice. And as to what that's about exactly, well, I'll let you take some guesses in the comments below. Anyway, let's now move on to some comments, starting as usual with the top-rated comment that came to us from Stephen Ramsey, who said, There is no fix. Nothing Lucasfilm can do will wipe the memories of what happened in The Last Jedi. As far as I'm concerned, the Luke Skywalker that is canon for me is Legends Luke, the one that fell in love with Mara Jade, had a family, and became the most powerful Jedi of all time. Jake Skywalker is just a cruel impersonation of a once great character. The next comment then comes to us from Jer Amy, who said, The reason I really ended up loathing Luke in The Last Jedi is because I was really looking forward to a badass, fully powered up Luke with some crazy new force abilities in action, but that never happened. He gave up on his nephew and tried to kill him. The same guy who thought there was good in Darth Vader, gave up on his nephew over a few bad thoughts. Luke's attitude through the whole movie is a bit snarky and condescending, which really turned me off to his character from the get-go. The reason why Luke means so much to me is that he exemplifies how you can come from nowhere, and though you may have flaws, you can learn from your mistakes and become something better. He always just seemed like someone to aspire to be like. Luke in The Last Jedi is not at all what anyone wants to be like, not even at the end of his arc. He left a sour taste in my mouth that's going to need a strong wash to get it out. And before I move to the next comment, I know some tend to get upset when people say that Luke tried to kill his nephew. I've more or less phrased it the exact same way before in videos and had people argue with me that that's not what happened at all. And it even got argued again here in response to this comment as well. And yes, you are technically right. Luke didn't actually try to kill him. He didn't swing the saber but he still took hold of it and ignited it, which means he had essentially gone past the contemplation stage and was ready to act. So in other words, he didn't try to kill him, but standing over your sleeping nephew with an ignited lightsaber in your hand and having committed, even briefly, to kill him isn't really much better. Our next comment then comes to us from Bunk, who had this to say. Luke Skywalker, what does he mean and where should he go now? Luke was someone, like myself, who was in a situation he wanted to be in. Someone that, while seeing and having every opportunity to give up, didn't. Every time I see a sunset, I hear the French horns playing, that tune in my head, and it's as if a shred of hope and optimism emerges in a darkening reality. That's what Luke meant. Now moving on, I think that in their quest to correct the ship that's floating aimlessly in the galaxy, they should have a sort of Qui-Gon Jinn moment with Luke. Early on, have Luke explain what the true ways of the Jedi actually are, to be solely committed to the will of the Force. I believe explaining this will not only explain the direction he was going, but also his actions with Ben. Luke speaking to Rey. To truly serve the Force, one must put the will of the Force above oneself, above one's family, and in this, I couldn't strike down Ben. When I reached out to my father, whom was trapped inside Vader, I saw hope. I sensed the light from within the darkness and saw the Jedi he once was. With Ben, I saw dimming moments of light in a world of darkness. In this moment of truth and in service of the Force, I failed. I couldn't truly heed the will of the Force and strike down my nephew, my sister's son. Next segment between Luke and Rey, Luke again speaking to Rey. You see, what blinded the Jedi Order is their attachment to the Republic. Their attachment dampened their connection to the Force, and in the end, before my father turned, their connection was all but lost. Their quest to fulfill the peace of the Republic replaced their connection to the will of the Force, and the balance was lost. A few moments go by, and then Luke says to Rey, When you appeared on Octu, I saw my younger self, lost and seeking answers to the past a sense of belonging, but your past is not what defines you, Ray. Your actions define you. Your will, your perseverance, that defines you. The connection, the belonging you seek is within you. 
Next up, we have a comment from Reimagining Star Wars who said, Why I love Luke. He defied his teachers to show love, grace, and mercy towards his father, allowing him a chance to choose the light again. Why I hate the Luke of The Last Jedi. He had the books, the knowledge, the mentors to seek out and attempt to correct his wrongs, but instead he cut himself off from everything. He forsook his family, his cause, his responsibilities, just because. The Luke I hope for. A Luke that hasn't given up on Ben, but understands it's Ben's choice. A Luke that explains to Rey what isn't in the books and shows her where the light of hope really comes from. Our next comment then comes to us from Dylan Lewis, who said, I've said what I'm about to say on a previous video, but if there is any chance Mark Hamill will see this, I'll say it again. Five years ago, I had a personal tragedy in my family. The event affected me very deeply and had me questioning everything about my life, including if my life was worth continuing. I was in a very dark place. In an effort to regain my life, I latched onto things I enjoyed in my childhood. Chief among these was Star Wars and my childhood hero, Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker wouldn't give up when people were counting on him, so neither could I. Luke Skywalker would stand up and face the challenges before him and win, and so could I. So I did, and I am a much better person than I was then. Luke Skywalker, along with my family and friends, helped save my life. Thank you, Mark Hamill, for bringing this character to life. May the Force be with you always. Continuing on now, our next comment comes to us from Daniel Wright, who says, I identified with his character as a child. Hell, I think many of us wanted to be him. That's one reason why many of us cannot abide the current incarnation of Luke. We can't see ourselves or him going down that road permanently. Eventually in life, the pendulum does swing the other way, and we grow stronger, learning from our failure. They wanted to show us a broken Luke, to tell a story about just how human he is, but forgot our ability to overcome. Most of us felt he was a stronger man than that. His strength of character in his youth is evidence enough. Virtually nothing could break his core self. George himself said Star Wars is a fairy tale and intended to be uplifting. This newer storytelling, full of opinion and less than balanced viewpoints, isn't what we had in mind. Sour old Luke is a deal breaker. Most people find a way to go on, as I feel Luke truly would have. The final comment I'm going to get to comes to us from 1735 Obey, and though his entire comment is excellent, I encourage you to pause and read the whole thing. It's only the last bit that I really want to focus on here, because it's going to relate very much to the question I'll have for all of you about Ray for next week's video. Anyway, what he says is, there is a time and a place for everything, politics included. However, apparently a political agenda has ruined Star Wars for a lot of people. Contemporary politics and social issues do not have a place in a galaxy far, far away. Luke Skywalker died on Endor in my eyes, and I'm not alone. Okay, so I won't claim to know what agendas those in charge of Star Wars may or may not have exactly, and how much those agendas influence their decisions in regards to the story they tell. Many people feel that Star Wars has become little more than propaganda for certain political ideologies, and these fans have left the franchise as a result mostly because they came to Star Wars in the first place to escape all that. And, as I've said before, when I envisioned the very first meeting discussing this new sequel trilogy that no doubt took place between Kathleen Kennedy and other top dogs at Lucasfilm and Disney, I can't help but see them not discussing the story they want to tell and how to make the most fans happy, but instead talking about how to make Star Wars as diverse as possible and that, above all else, there must be a female lead character. And to be crystal clear here, those are two things I have absolutely no problem with at all, because we're talking about a galaxy chocked full of countless different alien races, and where humans are an extremely prevalent species that have spread throughout the entire galaxy. So of course, just like here on Earth, which is a tiny scale compared to a galaxy, we're going to get humans who look very different from each other, depending on where exactly they come from. And any real Star Wars fan is also likely going to have zero problem with many different looking human beings. Also, despite what for some reason gets thought of as a new concept in Star Wars by some, the Force has been randomly choosing beings to be Force sensitive for as long as we know, and they've been both men and women alike that it chooses. So there was basically a 50-50 chance that the person the Force would awaken in would be female, as is the case with Rey. 
that is, again, something I have zero problem with and something I don't think any Star Wars fan has any problem with. It holds true with what has long been established and what is highlighted in the prequel era when there were Jedi of many different species and probably about as many male Jedi as female Jedi. My point here is that diversity and a main female Force-sensitive character make perfect sense in Star Wars, and I really don't think any rational fan has a problem with them, or would as long as they are good, well-thought-out characters, with both strengths and flaws. The problem with Rey for many people, however, is that she seems to be defined solely on her gender, and what she could mean to our society outside of the movie, not defined by balanced character traits, strengths and flaws within the movie. And one of the very odd things about the story of the sequel trilogy so far is that it seems to be a complete reversal of how heroic type stories are normally told, because usually it's the bad guy who seems to have no flaws and is unbeatable while it's the good guy that has nothing but troubles and seems to make all the wrong choices at first. The easiest example of this to cite is, of course, the original Star Wars trilogy, where Darth Vader gave off an air of absolute power and authority, like no one could ever hope to defeat him, while Luke, on the other hand, started off as a whiny farm boy in the first movie, before getting mentally and physically battered and bruised in the second movie of the trilogy by Vader, before finally learning how to be a hero, and how to find the weakness in an otherwise seemingly invincible monster that was Darth Vader. And you can certainly argue that the sequel trilogy was wise to not go for the exact same type of story, and it certainly hasn't, considering Kylo Ren, our new villain, seems to be the one who keeps failing and seems to be unsure of himself, while Rey, on the other hand, our hero, is the one who keeps winning and figuring things out with relative ease. I mean, Rey being able to defeat Kylo Ren in the first movie of the trilogy set a very odd tone for the whole thing, and then in The Last Jedi, Rey manages to save what's left of the Resistance in the end, while Kylo Ren falls for Luke's trick and lets them all get away. So currently Rey is 2-0 against Kylo Ren, and one of the reasons many aren't excited for Episode Nine is it seems to be destined to be a clean sweep by Rey, and that she'll win the last movie in some fashion, and many people believe that has a lot to do with the fact that they don't want to show a woman losing to a man. And how true that is, I really don't know. Again, I'm not going to assume to know everyone's agenda involved in making these movies, but there's this part of me that would be very interested to have seen the reaction out of people if the genders of Kylo and Rey were flipped, and in this new trilogy our main hero was a man, and our new villain was a woman. In that scenario, how would people have felt at the end of The Force Awakens if male hero Rey defeated female villain Kylo Ren in the exact same manner, by closing his eyes and letting the Force in at one point. Would it have caused about the same amount of disbelief as female Rey beating male Kylo Ren, based mainly on the hero's lack of training yet still being able to win? Or would it have caused much more disbelief and even anger because people would think the man had been able to overcome the lack of training because he was a man fighting a woman, and that's what gave him the edge? Or maybe it would have caused less controversy for that very same reason. What do I personally think? Honestly, I think people would have been just as upset or confused if the new badass female villain, who had been trained by both Luke Skywalker and Snoke, and was stopping blaster bolts at the start of the movie, had, at the end of the movie, lost to an untrained male character. I really don't think the gender matters at all to most people, and I think that's the case in most good fictional stories. I don't care so much about the gender or race of the character, only that they're good, relatable characters that hold true to what has been previously established in whatever story they come from. And based on everything we know and that's been previously established, someone with extensive training in the ways of the Force, like Kylo Ren, should have had a huge, essentially insurmountable advantage over someone without any training. And those who point out that Kylo was injured are forgetting that, if anything, that should have given him even more strength with the dark side. Let's not forget that Darth Maul, who survived being sliced in half, was able to do so because of his hatred for Kenobi and how strong it made him, strong enough to resist death. So Kylo Ren, who should have died after taking a hit from a bowcaster, and its power was established multiple times in the movie, must have been overflowing with dark side power during that duel. And if he wasn't, how did he survive being shot by the bowcaster? But I digress, and what I really want to do here before I end this video is ask everyone out there, what is it you like and or don't like about Rey? Do you think she's a good role model for young girls and even for young boys? And for all the women out there, I'm particularly curious to hear your take on Rey. What do you think of her character and the message she sends both to you personally and to young girls and women of all ages? What got you interested in Star Wars in the first place and who is your favorite character and why? 
And I ask these questions because Kathleen Kennedy has said that she doesn't think women could relate to Luke Skywalker. And I'm curious if that's an opinion you share or not. And if you are a woman responding to these questions, please indicate as such in your comments since it's not always easy to tell based on usernames what your gender is. And no, in no way am I trying to be condescending or mean-spirited with these questions. The other day on my Discord server, we got into this discussion about Rey and whether or not she is a good role model for girls, and I'm really curious to have this discussion expanded upon. And in next week's video, I'll go into as many responses as I can, from all sides of this argument, and even will let my fiancé weigh in on what she thinks about Rey, as well as one of my patron's 8-year-old daughter, who had some really interesting things to say about Rey that I'll share with all of you. And along those same lines, please feel free to share what your kids, boy or girl, thinks about Ray in the comments below, and perhaps I'll get to them as well. Well, that's all I've got for you this time, and now it's your turn to tell me what you thought of this video, or to answer the questions I just offered up. So leave a comment below, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.